Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis, and in this video, I've got a really quick and easy technique for you to show how you can match the color of objects in your pictures using Photoshop. Hi folks, just a couple of things then before we get started. The first one is, in the bottom right hand corner of this screen you're going to see my logo. Now if you get your mouse and you click on that, or if you're on a mobile device just pressing it with your finger, it basically means that you follow this channel or you kind of subscribe it, that's what YouTube call it. It's completely free but it basically means that you won't miss out on any of the free videos that I post on a fairly regular basis. And also it kind of lets me know that you're out there and you're throwing back a little bit of support. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the actual technique I'm going to go through now, uh, a big shout out goes to Russell Brown who I saw do this particular technique and I've kind of adapted it to suit my own particular way of working, so that's what we're going to go through now. So looking at the picture on screen then, what we've got here, this was from a client shoot that I had earlier on this year, 2017, where in the final brief what they said was that they needed the uh, three-seater sofa to match the colour of the brown chair. So the first thing we need to do then, I need to isolate this sofa from everywhere else in the picture because it's only the sofa I want to change the colour of. So I've made a very, very quick selection of that. I'm not going to let you sit there and do that, but let me just load it in, go to the Select menu, choose Load Selection, and I've got it saved in here called a Yellow Sofa click OK and you can see the marching ants. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that selection up onto its own layer and I can do that by holding down the control key on PC, command key on Mac and pressing the J key to jump it onto its own layer and if I turn off the original picture there, there you can see now the selection of the actual sofa. Now, when it comes to actually doing the actual technique, what I could do, ordinarily, depending on which technique I was using, I could literally make the adjustments now and just kind of eyeball it between the two, the sofa and the chair. But that can be a little bit challenging, so I want to show you one way of doing it which is going to really, really help and make it a lot easier. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my marquee tool, and I'm just going to make a very small selection on the arm of the yellow sofa, something around about there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and Control key on PC, that's the Option key and Command key on Mac, and when I do that, you'll notice that now that my cursor has got two arrowheads, one black and one white. And what this allows me to do is now click and drag a swatch of that yellow sofa, and I can now place it on top of the brown chair. And then it should press Command or Control D to get rid of those marching ants. Now I'm going to zoom in and just get it around about there. So the idea here is now that swatch is on the same layer as the sofa, the big yellow sofa. So if I can now change the colour of this swatch so that it kind of blends in and almost disappears on this brown chair, the colour that that swatch is going to go is also going to affect the sofa. Now, we're going to do it by using grayscale. Let me show you what I mean. Now, as you can see, I'm currently working on a color image, and the color space I'm working in, which is Adobe RGB. Now, if we go over to the right-hand side and we click on the channels, we can see how that RGB color space is all made up. At the top here, we've got the RGB composite. That's what you can actually see on screen now, the full color picture. And underneath it, the three individual channels, red, green and blue. But what you'll see is that they are represented in a grayscale value. So that's the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. And that's going to really help us out now when we come to actually make these changes on this particular picture. Now what I'm going to do is let's just first of all click on the RGB composite and we'll zoom back in now onto that swatch. Now, first thing I'm going to do then, I'm going to click on the red channel. So I now need to make the red channel values of this swatch match the red channel values of the brown chair. And I'm going to do that by using curves. So I'm going to go to the image menu, choose adjustments and curves. Keyboard shortcut there, command or control M. Now in here we're already on the red channel and I'm actually going to click in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little icon here called the target adjustment. Now depending on what version of Photoshop you're using, you might find that's in a slightly different place on that dialog box, but basically what you're looking for is a hand with a finger sticking out and an arrow above and below it, that's your target adjustment. So I'm going to click on that, bring my cursor over into my image and I'm going to place it just above the swatch, click and then start to drag down. Now as I do that you'll notice that the actual swatch starts to darken down and we can see now what I want to do, I want to try and make it blend into the arm of the chair so I tend to find when I get to this point if I squint 
it kind of helps me <laughs> do this little process a little bit better. So we'll take it to around about, that's looking pretty good there. So then I'll click OK. Now I need to do this process now on the other remaining channels, the green and the blue. So I'll click on the green channel. We can see the swatch really stands out on the green channel. But again, we're going to go to the image, adjustments and curves. Click on that target adjustment, put the cursor just above the middle of the swatch, click down and then drag downwards. Get it to around about this point here. Then I'll start to do some squinting action. So we'll go for around about, there's looking good. Click OK and then finally on the blue channel, again the swatch is really standing out. So we go to image, adjustments and curves. Click on the target adjustment, bring the cursor just above the swatch in the middle, click down and drag downwards quite a way. Let's go for round about. I'm going to go for there and then click OK. So that's the red, green and blue uh, grayscale values have now matched pretty much on the swatch to match those of the chair because it's kind of blending in. And we can see that now if I click on the RGB composite, can you see how that swatch has pretty much disappeared? So now then what we're going to do is click on the layers, go back to the layers. Let's now double click on the hand tool to see how by changing that swatch color has affected the sofa because it's on the same layer. Let's just double click on the hand tool. And we can see now that pretty much we've done a damn good job there of getting the color of that three seater sofa to match in with the chair. Now, of course, they're different material. The chair is leather, so we've got that kind of shiny kind of surface to it with all those highlights. But then the actual um, and the actual sofa is kind of like a, a tightly woven material. But actually, there's one little thing I did in the final image that was delivered to the client. I'll show you that in a moment that I did to kind of help it to look almost like the same kind of material as well. So we can kind of fake that. But just going back to the actual sofa here, if you thought it needed darkening down, one thing you could do, maybe go back to the curves. Uh, we're going to add a clipping mask now so that what I do with this curves now only affects the layer directly below which is the actual sofa. If I didn't do what is called a clipping mask, it would make the whole picture go darker. So let's just click in the middle of the curve here, just drag it down just a touch. Somewhere around about there. So now we can see before, after, before, after. That'd be fine. So now let me show you then as a little bonus. In fact, before we do that, we'll click on the actual uh, cutout of the sofa there, zoom in. We want to get rid of this swatch, don't we? So let's get the eraser tool and we'll just paint that swatch away. Cool, that's gone. All right, so the final thing, a little bonus thing for you, just to show you this one here. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to create what's called a merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack. Shift, Control, Alt and E on PC or Shift, Command, Option and E on Mac. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the filter menu and choose filter gallery. Now in here, lots and lots of different kind of effects you can have. In the artistics uh, folder here, if I click that down, there's about 12 or 15 different varieties, but one of them is called plastic wrap. And if I just drag this over, you can see what it's actually doing to the picture here. Now we can play, away with these, uh, play around with these three sliders over on the right hand side. Let's just bring up the smoothness just a little bit more. And in fact, let's just take it down to a touch actually, 13. Yep, something like that, and we don't really want much detail. And we'll just click OK. And you can see now that it's done that plastic wrap effect to the whole picture, but I only want it on certain parts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hide that effect by holding down my Alt on PC or Option key on Mac, clicking on the layer mask icon. That adds a black layer mask. And then all I'm going to do is just zoom in. I'll just show you a little bit on this arm over here. Let's just uh, go to uh, here. I'm going to get a brush, I'm going to get a white brush, 100% opacity. I'm going to bring the actual flow down just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just make it sure it's soft, nice soft brush. There we go. And this is what I actually did when I did before I delivered it to the client. So a few brush strokes now going around with that plastic wrap filter just to apply it or reveal it rather in areas that I want it to be just on little bits of the sofa. So we'll come down to here. Paint a little bit more of there, paint on that bit. And what I did before I delivered it to the client, went around the whole of the sofa, just adding in this kind of fake um, leathery kind of look to the material. But you can see it doesn't do a bad job at kind of faking the look there.
cool. There we go. So that's just a real quick extra little tip there for you. So that's pretty much it. But just before I go, quick reminder, make sure if you haven't already that you subscribe or rather follow this particular channel by clicking on that subscribe and follow button. Uh, and if you like the video, give it a quick thumbs up and I'd really appreciate it if you could share with other people you think would like to see the content that I'm sharing out here. But that's pretty much me for now. I'll catch you next time.